Okay, what you have here is the beginning opening screen when you start Super Breadbox. Um, of course, after you've entered your name and pressed the fire button. I'm controlling this with my joystick, uh, which is attack 2, and I'm using up arrow, down arrow. And you see the first option is to play the game, and you en enable any of these options by pressing fire button. The second option is a tutorial, which is a nice, uh, handy-dandy uh, little way to learn how to play the game. If you can't complete the tutorial, then you'll never be able to complete the game. Uh, the characters, this is the first one I'll hit the fire button on. These are the characters that you have that are unlocked, and you, you can see right now I have a lot of characters yet to unlock. Um, this game is very difficult, and to unlock these extra um, characters, you have to score at least 20 points. You have to pick one of them. I don't like picking between... I don't like this one in particular because it has a lot of black area around it and a lot of the screens in this game have a black background. I'll just pick one of these guys. And then, okay, um, statistics. I'll show you the statistics. I've been playing this game for a few hours. And here, here's my game. I, I under the name of Glenn, which is my name. And you can see the kills, your deaths, your falls, how many discs in your crates. Although it's interesting, it's, it's still called crates because this game was ported from Super Crate Box, which was the original game. I think this should say Bread Boxes right here. And. I believe those are the codes at the bottom that you can use. So I'll write those codes down, pushing the fire button to return back to the menu. You also have the capability of doing a disk save. Now I'm running this game right here in Vice, so I, I unfortunately I didn't, I wasn't one of the lucky ones who picked up this game on, on a cartridge format. In Vice, it lets you save it. When I tried this using my Ultimate 2, I get a disk error. So here it lets you save it. The credits show you who were the designers and who were the programmer and the people that ported the game over. Uh, Paul Kohler did the conversion and then the music. Pushing the button brings you back to the m menu. When the last time when I saved my statistics and I came back into the game, everything was zeroed out except the crates, I believe, at the bottom. So I have 2175. So I'm going to try that now just to see if I get the same reaction. Okay, so here at the, when you first start Super Breadbox, you have to enter your name, enter a code, which I've written down or do a disk load and I'm going to do the disk load since I just saved it. I'm going to demonstrate what happens in Vice when you do the disk load and the disk save. Then I'm going to go to statistics and look everything's gone except for my codes and my crates 2175 which is kind of a bummer you know the, to me the whole point of having um, a save button would be to save all the statistics. And then you just hit fire to play the game. And then from there you have your level to choose from. The construction yard, you can see my scores here, my best and my last. Rocket Silo, Moon Temple, and I haven't unlocked the rest of these levels yet. It's quite difficult for a beginner like me to un unlock these levels, but I'll get there. And I'll show you what Rocket Silo looks like. Yeah. And.
I don't like the, this particular weapon. I love the bazooka. Oh, I got, got. You know, I go to the I'll go to the next level. Pushing down after you die, you get to go back to your level select. Right arrow to go to the next level and fire button to start. And I kind of like this level. Love the double pistol. As you can see, I'm not very good at this game, but I do lo love it. It's it's very addictive. Okay, go to the next level. So, in the Moon Temple, and I guess we'll go back to the construction yard. This is where you start in the first level. I find this game to be so addictive. When you die, you just want to start over, and you know you can. Oops, you know you can beat it. Your last score is very, very fun to play. Um, some of the gameplay elements are one of the things that you need to pay attention to are these guys, the little green guys that are coming at you. They kind of remind me of the Flood in Halo. But if they get to the bottom and they go into that pool, which looks like a pool of water, it's really fire. And when they come out, when they, they come back from the top, and they come back angry and really fast and come at you. So you, you're kind of your goal is to prevent that from happening. Or face the wrath if you don't. The actual goal though is to collect the bread baskets. And that, when they put them way up at the top, because that's where the enemy comes out, it's very difficult to get up there without losing your life. And you only get one life in this game, and you have to start all over, so it makes it very tough. It's really a challenging game, but at the same time it's, it's fun to play. Um, very addictive. And I can't recommend it enough. I, I love it. You can tell um, the bullets. There's so many elements on the, on the game. Um, you have all these little guys coming at you. You have a, a... I don't know what they're called. You have the larger enemy that comes at you. But your bullets, like from the minigun or from the machine gun or whatever you're firing, those are character graphics, and it's a very interesting way that they have implemented the game. I, you know, I'm a, I assume there's lots of other games that's done this, but I thought it was a pretty, pretty smart way to, to do it. You can see it better on the construction level, I think. Let me see. Oh, this is the construction. On the Moon Temple level, when you're firing the minigun. When you fire bullets, you can just see if I can ever get a minigun or a machine gun, I'll demonstrate what I'm saying. See the you can see the black area around the bullets. You see the white in the middle and the black around it. To me, that's to me how how I realize that these are characters that you, that are just shooting across, and it's done so fluidly and so well implemented that it's not even a distraction for me. The game is very fun, and um, mostly I've been playing it in emulation. Um, I will demonstrate playing it off of my Ultimate Two, and. When I was playing it on the Ultimate 2, I, I did notice that on real hardware it appears that the game goes a little slower, so I don't know if that's intentional. The Commodore 64 Ultimate 2 in. I'm going to navigate... Oops. Down to... 
the S's. Super bread box. Start the cartridge. The bin doesn't work on this. Run the cartridge. Enter my name here. You can put anything there for now. It's on the cartridge. And let's try statistics. I should have zero on everything. Yep. And let's play. And I'll demonstrate the speed. So immediately you can tell the the enemies just don't move as fast. So to me it makes for a lot easier of a game and maybe that was the way it was intended. I'm, I don't know now at this point. I just know it's much more difficult playing it on Vice. Although it's still difficult either way. I would have been dead earlier. <laughs> Let's try one more game here. I don't last that long at any rate. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, you can tell that the speed is much different on the real hardware, at least using the Commodore 64 Ultimate 2. Um, I don't have a cartridge version to compare it with. But it's very interesting, and either way, it's still a very fun game. I just thought it was interesting to show that you can actually see the difference in the speed. Obviously, I don't have anything unlocked. I don't have any way of saving. You just down arrow to get back to your main menu. Let's see what reset does on the cartridge. It says to hold fire for three seconds. And it gets to get to enter your name. Anyway, that's the game on the 664 Ultimate. The following is a video montage of most of the weapons in Super Bread Box. First up is the grenade launcher. It's a really cool weapon that fires a bunch of grenades in rapid succession and it destroys the enemy on contact with an explosion. It's a really cool, fun weapon to toy around with. Next up is the revolver. The revolver is really cool. It fires a bunch of bullets very rapidly. The bullets are white colored with a black dot in the middle. It's a fun weapon. I highly recommend it. The katana it kills your it kills your enemies with by whacking them one slice at a time. It's a very tough weapon. Uh, once you're dealt with that, I usually die. The double pistol is a really cool weapon. Uh, it allows you to fire in two directions simultaneously. It's not very powerful. It takes a couple of hits to kill the the larger enemies, but it is a nice weapon to, to have. Next up is the minigun. The minigun is a—it's like a very powerful machine gun. Um, fires very rapidly and it throws you back against the wall. It can—you can die from this um, this power of this gun. It, it pushes you backwards really fast. You can, it can push you into the lake. Uh, to, I'm sorry, into the fire or into the enemy. The machine gun is a less powerful version of the minigun. It does push you backwards slightly, so you, if you're on the edge, you can fall off, and which can result in your death. The mines are cool. Um, it takes some planning. You got to plant the mines, and then you got to hope that they explode upon contact with the enemy. I usually die when I get the mines. The disc gun is really cool. It fires and bounces off the wall a couple times, and it kills the weapon. It kills the enemies. It can you can die yourself from using that weapon. 
the uh, laser rifle is cool. Shoots a laser across the screen, kills anything in its path. It's very powerful. It's a fun weapon to have. It's a little difficult because it fires slowly, though. The shotgun is... It's a weapon that I don't like very to use very much. I, when I get the shotgun, it, you have to push it very... You have to push the fire button a lot. It's not very powerful. It doesn't kill all the enemies. I usually die when I get it. The bazooka is a really cool weapon. It's like throwing grenades at high speed. It essentially is a grenade launcher, but it go, they go straight, whereas the grenades, they, they fall down when you throw them. The flamethrower is, is one of the nicer weapons in the game. Uh, they kill most enemies upon contact. It takes a little longer to kill the larger objects, the larger enemies, but it's a fun weapon, unlimited. It allows you to press it for as long as you hold the fire button. And this is the website for Super Bread Box. It's located at www.superbreadbox.com. It's pretty cool. On the homepage, you have a few characters from the game playing on a Commodore 64. There's a little Vimeo video in the center, which is essentially a tutorial of the game. You have an About tab at the top, which gives you a lot more information about the game, as well as who the designers of the game and the contributors are. There's a High Score tab which shows you the high score, the leaderboard that's available. You can enter your code and your email address to register your information. There's the play tab, which tells you all about how to get your hands on this game, which is really cool, a lot of information. Um, as far as I know, currently the cartridge is not available, at least not at the time of this recording. So anyhow, take a look at this website www.superbreadbox.com It's really cool. You can't go wrong.